Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. Miss Marvel. <sighs> now nah, I didn't want to make a video on this because let's face it, it's Marvel, it's Hollywood, it's that industry and we know how they portray Muslims. In a study from 1896 to the year 2000, only about 12 movies depicted Arabs in a positive light. And then if we look at a study from Georgia State University and Alabama, Muslims receive an average of 357% more terror coverage than any other group. In fact, between 2006 to 2015, Muslims only accounted for 12.5% of terrorist attacks but received half of the news coverage. So that's one of the few things that white people have done and haven't taken credit for. <laughs> Coming back to Miss Marvel, I didn't have many expectations, but I was still let down. Look, let me break this down, yeah? So Miss Marvel, the trailer came out, but the comic books have been around for some time. The movie's gonna come out, God knows, in a couple of months, yeah? Here's, here's a breakdown, yeah? She comes from strict religious parents, okay? Look at the father, yep, bearded guy, very stern. And there you can see the brother, also with a beard, Yes, doesn't look very happy does he? Nope, it's the typical angry bearded religious bloke stereotype. She's got this obsession for pigs. Yeah, <laughs> look here she's drawing them in a book, then there she's got it hung up in her room. I mean if they're not taking a mick with this, I don't know what they're doing. And of course she sneaks out to parties. She fancies boys just like you've got uh, westernized women that fancying boys with six packs and a clean shave. Oh yeah, well she does exactly the same thing. She idolizes her three white superheroes. You've got Captain America, you've got Iron Man and you've got Captain Marvel. Of course she wants to be like Captain Marvel. She doesn't wear the hijab, she dances at weddings. As I've described, <laughs> she's a typical Muslim, yeah? <laughs> no, no of course not. And oh yeah, it's written by Muslims. Yeah, so you can't blame Marvel, they've got themselves covered in that regard. They just wouldn't accept a, a script that obviously is not in line with their values and their ethos, obviously, but on paper, yeah, one of them wears a hijab and the other one, God knows what's going on there mate. Now you might be thinking, look, we're living in the 21st century mate, this is reality, this is what the kids are doing nowadays. Okay then if we want to represent the races properly then why don't we represent the whites properly then? Yeah why don't we get a superhero who grows up as an illegitimate child with their parents eventually splitting up, them losing identity over which gender they are, sneaking to the fridge when dad falls asleep and drinking his beer, being addicted to pornography and possibly even becoming a paedophile. I mean if you want to represent people the way they are in the 21st century then that's how you should do it, but they don't. Captain America is not the colonizing fat bloke that we typically see in America. Obesity mate, colonization that's what America's known for. Captain America's a six pack chiseled guy who's all about compassion and who knows his limits. What? That's not Captain America, that's like Captain Indonesia. <laughs> Then we've got a rich guy who's Iron Man. No, they, they don't mention about him having offshore accounts through which he funnels his money, you know, evades paying tax. He has bigoted views on minorities and he spends most of his time lobbying governments, paying for strippers and dying alone. Lol. I mean that's, that's the real representation of a rich white guy that works in your stocks and shares or whatever. Kind of re redefining yourself, finding finding who you are based on your own terms and not listening to other, other people's um, definitions of the labels and categories that you belong to. Now, you know exactly what she's trying to say, religion, <laughs> because she's seen as the first Muslim Marvel hero. It was very much about breaking stereotypes and about the idea of changing people's perceptions of Muslim Americans. I don't know what's Muslim about her frankly yeah, it's just the typical surface stuff. So here the creators trying to say yeah make your own choice yeah, don't be defined by religion. Okay if I sideline religion then 
what are my options? Yeah, where am I learning from? I'm learning from society. I'm learning from what's around me. And I'm learning from the most dominant of voices in the society. Voices that have been funded, voices that have an agenda. In other words, money, culture, and yeah, chasing your desires. So again, it's the illusion of choice. Yeah, look, you're in slavery of religion. Come to us, mate. So again, it's the illusion of freedom. Yeah. On the one hand, you've got slavery of religion. On the other hand, you've got slavery of your desires. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'd rather be a slave to God than a slave to these people with their messed up mentalities and their constantly changing cultural norms and, you know, all these constantly changing ideas based upon seeking the most pleasure. Let's face it, it's Jeremy Bentham's The Pain Principle. Pain, bad, pleasure, good is this pain pleasure principle. So Marvel and all you other shows like Lauer in it. Yeah, if you're going to represent us, do it properly. Otherwise, we're not interested. Yeah, don't make our work harder than it is. Yeah, we got enough on our plate without dealing with this nonsense. And you got this woman saying people came and came up to me, came up to Willow and they said, finally, we have a character out there, not just a superhero, but a character out there that we can connect with and that my young daughter, my young son can aspire to become one day. Who? Who are these parents, mate? Now, what are you doing? You should not be allowed to reproduce like as a good parent. This is the one thing at least you should be doing is keeping your kids away from mainstream content. Or obviously you can't keep your kids totally away from it, but at least equip them that they can see through the biases and the stereotypes and you know the propaganda that they get through these movies and these cartoons and stuff. If you can't do that mate, like allow it in it. Like don't make our thing difficult. They start looking up to these people, start doing madness out there, start making videos and mis misrepresenting the Muslims. Because let's face it, according to MI5, those Don said that the biggest threat to society are Muslims that don't practice. Yeah, no one mentions that extreme. Yeah, everyone's always fussed about the other extreme. These people that are actually doing the foolishness Yeah, in the, the Paris attacks, one of the dons bought a book called Dummy's Guide to Islam. Two of the attackers, the Abdus Salam brothers, sold a bar they owned in Belgium six weeks before they went on their murderous rampage in France. Then there's the two British guys who went off to fight in Syria and who ordered two books off Amazon before they left and they weren't the Holy Quran or the collected sayings of the Prophet Muhammad. They were Islam for dummies and the Quran for dummies. The, the Donny didn't even know about Islam mate. He sold his bar and then went to Paris and did some madness there. Flip and heck mate, like give me a break. Alright guys, let's leave it there until next time. Assalamu alaikum.